about that. Is it chemist tea time already? Well, I guess it is. Today's lesson is going to be an important stepping stone to a larger picture. We will begin by doing a review over bonding theories which are going to explain how bonds form molecular geometries and also explain physical and chemical properties. We will begin by talking about the Lewis model which was created by Gilbert N. Lewis. Lewis was an American physical chemist who made a number of contributions to thermodynamics, acid bases, chemical bonding, and many more. Lewis's chemical bonding model is simplistic and represents bonds as a pair of dots or lines. These models are used to help visualize complex structures. It does not always accurately portray how molecules look spatially, but it is a useful tool to understand the electronic structure of bonds. In order to explain and understand why bonds form, we will go over a number of different bonding theories. The driving force behind the formation of bonds is that it decreases the potential energy which increases the stability of the system. The formation of a bond consists of a number of interactions. As the atoms come closer to one another, the attractive forces between the nucleus, which is positively charged, is attracted to another atom's electrons. However, at the same time, there are a number of repulsive forces that are also taken into account and a bond is formed if the overall potential energy of the system is decreased. We will begin by classifying chemical bonds into the following categories, ionic bonds, covalent bonds, and metallic bonds. Each of these types of bonds will focus on the electrons. For ionic bonds, electrons are transferred between atoms. In covalent bonds, the electrons are shared between the atoms. And in metallic bonds, the electrons are shared in a pool. Let's focus on ionic bonds. Remember, ions are charged atoms or molecules as a result of the loss or gaining of electrons. When a species loses an electron, this is known as a cation. And the ion is positively charged. Anions are negatively charged species because they have gained electrons. Ionic bonding is the attractive force between cations and anions which form ionic structures known as lattices. Ionic lattices are stable crystalline structures that consist of an ordered arrangement of oppositely charged ions. Let's recall from an earlier lesson when we learned about ionization energy, which is the energy associated to the removal of an electron. Metals tend to have low ionization energies, which means they are more likely to lose electrons, whereas nonmetals have higher ionization energies. However, this trend was reversed for electron affinities. It was more likely for the nonmetals to accept electrons compared to metals. These trends mean that generally metals form cations and nonmetals frequently form anions. When metals react with nonmetals, ionic bonds are formed because electrons are transferred. With covalent bonding, electrons are shared between atoms. The electrons being shared are attracted to both nuclei and are known as a bonding pair. By sharing electrons, each atom is able to attain an octet configuration, which lowers the potential energy, making the bond formation favorable. This is because when an atom has eight valence electrons, it has a full shell. This is known as the octet rule. The third type of bonds are metallic bonds, which occur between metals. Remember, metals have a low ionization energies, so they tend to lose electrons. This bonding model describes metallic bonds as a sea of delocalized electrons. When referring to delocalization of electrons, this simply means electrons are shared among many atoms. Metallic bonds are strong and tend to have high melting and boiling points. As a brief summary, ionic bonds are a result of electrostatic attraction between metals and nonmetals. Covalent bonds are a result of nonmetals sharing electrons, and metallic bonds are between metals that pool the electrons. Continuing on with Lewis theory, he devised a system known as Lewis dot symbols. This system consists of the chemical symbols surrounded by dots, which represent valence electrons. In order to write a Lewis diagram, you first start out by writing the chemical symbol. 
let's do this for nitrogen, which is denoted as N. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. When placing the dots around the atomic symbol, you place them individually before pairing, keeping in mind a maximum of two dots per side. Let's go ahead and place the dots around nitrogen. It does not matter where you start, so I'll begin on the left side of nitrogen and go around placing four dots around. Since there are no more empty sides, I'll begin pairing the electrons. The final product will look like the following. Now we can go ahead and do this for any of the main group elements. Here are the Lewis dot symbols for the entire second period starting with lithium. You can see the progression of the Lewis dot symbols as you increase the number of valence electrons. As an overview, Lewis theory is a simplistic model that shows the number of valence electrons that a main group element has. Chemical bonds are a result of sharing or transferring electrons between atoms in order to achieve a stable configuration. Lewis theory associates a stable configuration as having an octet to decrease the potential energy, which this is known as the octet rule. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson and I'll see you next time. Thank you.